Hey, this time I want to show you my space shooter. In the first part of this video I will explain the logic behind this game. And in the second part I will go through the code and explain it. I suggest you to watch the first part of the video since I don't get into much details in the second part. So the code will be easier to understand. Now here is how the game looks like in action. The first what I actually did is the space moving down. It's quite simple, we generate it by randomly drawing the star characters to a line, which length is the same as the game's width. And we do this height times. Every constant time, which could be a millisecond for instance, the space updates its state. And it moves. Now we do that by firstly erasing the last line, because in the next state it would be out of map scope. After that we move all of the lines down. And lastly we add a new line at the start of the space. Now let's spawn the enemies and let them go to the end of space. The enemies should spawn at the top, so at the beginning their body should be out of map's range. We set the position on the x-axis to minus enemy height, which in this case is minus 2. An enemy can spawn randomly in between 0 and height minus enemy width on y-axis. The enemies should spawn at a random time. Let's define that by giving a time in which the enemy can potentially spawn, and then giving the chance of spawning at the time. After that we need the enemies to move down. Let's have a constant time in which an enemy can make a move. It's easy, we increment the enemy's X position and in the draw call we draw it. But before updating the enemy's position we have to check if the enemy can move to the next tile. If this tile is already occupied by an enemy for instance, the enemy can't make a move. Also, we have to be aware of when the enemy's body is out of the map's bounds. If it is out of the bounds, we erase the body part, so we don't draw it to the screen next frame. The enemies should also be able to shoot. Let's implement that so they can do it. Every fixed time there is a chance that the enemy's ship can shoot. So, the moment the ship shoots, we store the bullets in the storage. The bullets should also have a fixed time in which they can move forward. And every time bullets update, we have to check if they hit something. If one of the bullets caused a collision, we delete that bullet from the storage. In case the bullet hit the player, the player's health decreases. And in case the next bullet's position is out of the bounds, it should be erased. Next comes the player. Nothing special here, the player should move left and right. Also we have to check for if the player can make a move, before we change the player's position. The player should be able to shoot. This works the same as the enemy's shooting. Finally, we have to check if the game is over. It happens when the player loses all of his health. Firstly, I want to clarify that I am on macOS, so for the text user interface I use the end curses library. If you are on Windows, you can utilize the windows.h library and use these functions for setting the cursor position and color information. I won't explain the end curses part in my code. End curses is not that hard to learn. You can look up to this video if you want to learn end curses by yourself. Let's look at the main. Here I set the random seed. After that I initialize some end cursor stuff. And here I start the game. First let's look for the update variables. As you can see above, I defined a struct which is called update. This struct contains information that we will need to find out whenever something can be updated. So here for example we can see an update variable which we need to know whenever we can update the space movement. 
Then down here I have a variable which is a vector that stores update variables for every enemy's bullet. Every time we want to update the bullets, we go through all of them and look if the time has come to update the bullet. And here we have another vector which stores the update time that tells whenever an enemy can shoot a bullet. I think you get the idea. Here I declare the mutex variable which is used for threat safety. If you are not familiar with mutexes, check out this video. Ok, now let's get to the functions. The game begins in the start function. We generate the space here. Next we create a thread for the player. It's necessary because the game doesn't have to stop every time it waits for the player's input. We set the last update variables here, so later on we can calculate how much time has passed by since the last update. Then here we set the player's position. Afterwards we end up in the game loop. This is where the fun begins. The loop ends whenever the player has lost all of his health. Now let's take a look at the update function. First what we update is the space. Here we check whenever it's time for the space to update. Next we move the whole space except the last line by one and assigning the updated space to our vector. Lastly, here we add a new line at the start of the space. We save the last update time here. Next we have the enemies in the update function. So let's look for the function. If it's update time for the enemy to spawn, then there's a chance that the enemy can spawn randomly at the top of the space. So we save the position into the enemy's vector. After that we add an instance of the move update time for the enemy. And then we do the same for the shooting update. Outside here we loop until the variable y is bigger than the size of the enemy's vector. If the current enemy is not ready for an update, then we increment y and just continue. Else if the enemy is out of the map bounds, then we erase all the enemy's data. We passed over the enemy collision tab, we also gave over the index of the current enemy, so we can access all of the enemy's data. Here we go through all of the player's ship and check if the position of the enemy overlaps with the player's ship. If it does, then we erase the enemy's data and decrease the player's health. The collision was successful, so we return true. Otherwise, we return false. Back to where we left off, if the collision was successful, we continue. Otherwise, we check if the enemy can shoot. If enemy's head is not out of the bounds and the random state is true, then we can add a bullet to the vector. We save the last update time here. And outside we do the same for the enemy's movement. We increase y by 1. Back to the update, we code the bullets function. I will explain this part after we get to the player's thread. We call the lambda function over here and pass over the enemy's bullets information. Then we overgive the direction in which the bullets should move. We overgive the collision type, which in this case is enemy bullet. We loop here until the y is bigger or equal to the bullet size. If it's not yet time to update the current bullet, then we increment y and continue. Otherwise we check if the bullet can't move. If the statement is true, we erase the bullet's information. Else we increment the x position by the direction we gave over. Then we check for collision here. In it we check if the bullet overlaps the player. If it does, then we erase the bullet's data and decrease the player's health. If it's not the case, we check if the bullet overlaps an enemy. If it does, we remove the bullet's data and return true. Back to bullets, if the collision wasn't successful, we renew the last update and increase y. So all what is left now is the player, which runs in another thread. Here we first initialize the shoot update. Down here we have a loop, which ends when the game is over. Here we check for the player's input. If the left key is pressed, we first look if the player can move to the position. In case he can, we decrement the y position. Then we handle the collision for the player. We go through all of the enemies and check whenever the enemy ship intersects with the player. If it does, then we erase the enemy's data. We also decrease the player's health. Next, we check if the enemy's bullets intersect with the player's ship. 
In case it does, we erase the bullet data. And of course, we decrease the player self. Then back here, we do almost the same. If the spacebar was pressed, we check here first if the player can shoot. If he can, we lock the bullet mutex, so we make sure that the other thread won't do anything that has to do with the player's bullets. We push back a bullet above the player's head, then we push back the bullet's update movement. And lastly, we set the last update to null. We unlock the mutex here, now the other thread can access this block of code. Here we make a collision detection for the bullets as you know. So everything stays the same as in the case of the enemy. Except let's look for the handle collision here. Here we check if the bullet intersects with an enemy. If it does, we remove the enemy's data and the player's bullet. Back to the player function, in case the player presses Q, the game overstate sets to true and the game ends right away. So that was the update part. Now let's look for the draw function. In case the time has come for a frame to draw, we draw the space. Next we go through the player's ship array and print it. Outside we draw players and the enemy's bullets. Here we draw the enemies. If a ship part is out of scope, then we don't draw it. And lastly we draw the health of the player to the screen. We don't want to forget to renew this variable. So that's it. Subscribe to my channel, more stuff are coming. Like and share, comment below if you have a question. I will answer it.